Alrighty then, back once again for another reaction. This time it's Ruby, Volume 7, Chapter 3, Ace Operatives. Which is very promising, because uh, that means obviously we're going to focus on the Ace Ops. Yay! New group, new characters, heavy focus in the opening, obviously going to play a big role this volume. And I'm excited to see what they're all about. I want to see their powers, I want to see their relationship dynamics, I want to see how well they actually get on with our crew, and if they, um, you know, uh, manage to convey a human connection instead of um, ending up being robotic lapdog types. Um, I don't know how it's going to go, uh, but I'm hopeful, because they seem like cheerful fellows. I just don't want the other shoe to drop, and as soon as it comes time to follow the rules or punish, it's like full authority and training. I, I, I'm, there's something in the back of my mind that says that's coming, but... And it's got nothing to do with any spoilers. Um, I don't know much at all about the Aesops. So that's just the gut feeling that I have. And I hope I'm wrong. I, ho I hope that they are just going to be genuine dudes throughout the whole thing. I know they've got some girls in there, but I'm, I'm just saying genuine dudes. Uh... Yeah, um, as for what I didn't mention at the end of chapter 2, um, same day. <laughs> as I said, I want to get multiple of these out today. Um, like I know I said that everyone was uh, sort of uh, talking about secrecy and stuff and um, like transparency where Ruby and Co weren't being fully transparent. Um, Ironwood on the other hand is going so transparent that he is ready to tell the entire world about um, Salem's existence and while you could understand Ospin not wanting people to panic because of the Grimm uh, you can also see Ironwood side of things for, well, after everyone's initially gotten over it, everyone is now aware. And in the long term, isn't awareness better? And wouldn't it make the fight easier than just this small group of people that are only allowed to know and the fight goes on for an infinitely longer amount of time? I, I, I'm guessing he's thinking like in order to accelerate the fight against Salem and um, end all this suffering by her forces generation after generation because we've seen like in her previous generation of um, personal agents she had that uh, crocodile faunus uh, that Maria ended up killing you know I, I have I don't even want to imagine how many people she's had under her beck and call and use them to slaughter the innocent and anyone that stood in her way, you know, for such a long time. So uh, Ironwood would basically want to break that cycle and try and end the fight as soon as possible within his own lifetime. And letting everyone know in the long term future would be a good step towards that. But as I saw in the comment section on the RT website underneath the last chapter, I'm watching these there because that's where they're the highest quality. Um, something he's not taking into consideration is Mantle and why that guy actually had some valid complaints in the police van. Um, like. It's mainly Solitus the top bit that's um, fully protected. Like, no matter how many troops they have got at Atlas, Mantle is very unguarded, as evidenced uh, by Watts effortlessly uh, watchdogging all of the street facilities. Like, it's going to be a walk in the park for a lot of Grimm, because um, yeah, R Ruby, and you know. Um, you know, Team Ruby and the Atlas robots did okay with those uh, saber tooths. Obviously, um, Penny came and cleaned up, but um, imagine uh, their numbers like times a hundred. I'm guessing with the sheer amount of panic, like it's going to overwhelm even the best huntsmen. So, yeah, I can see, I can see where there's a problem uh, because of the class divide in Atlas at the moment and. What Ironwood's also conveniently ignoring is that uh, if he does send out the broadcast message about Salem all over the world, 
there's not much protection in some of those other places, is there? <laughs> like, anywhere that message hits is going to be attacked by Grimm, so... Like, that includes places all the way out in the middle of nowhere, like a few of the villages that we passed through in Volume 4. That includes out-of-the-way places like Menagerie. Like, stuff's gonna happen. And a lot of people are gonna die due to the Grim. And it's sort of weighing up if that's worth the long-term goal. Now, Ironwood is a very uh, pragmatic, calculated sort of man. And he does have a human side to him. And I think he's decided in his heart of hearts it would be worth the sacrifice. Because he himself is sacrificing his popularity with his tough lockdown measures. Which, <laughs> oh, doesn't that a sore subject right now with all this... Uh, Backstreet Boys reunion tour going on. That's the YouTube safe word to refer to this virus, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Game Grumps. Yeah, this Backstreet Boys reunion tour, it, it's, it's feeling very similar. Like, we've got the country on lockdown. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, enough about all that don't really know what else to say uh i'm looking forward to carrying on with my ruby journey and here we go all right gather around our mission today is to secure the launch site for the amity communications tower Designated areas and abandoned I still dust think that the Since tower, the closure, the regardless of in. whether Ironwood Good sends news. out his message or Saw not, is going to be a bad idea because it's going to be hacked. Science team says they'll need it for the and first the wrong the message will be Our sent out. For the mess. And for holding on to your weapons hey! For so long. The upgrades you requested were, uh, well, there were more than I anticipated. <laughs> Atlas military huntsmen are already hard at work clearing out the surrounding tundra. I love the, the particle effects on the Grim now. Managed to evade destruction and take several lives. After we increased our numbers, the Geist was smart enough to retreat into the mine itself, meaning it's old and extremely dangerous. This is our target. Your new weapons and armor should be as requested. <laughs> Nora, so excited. I took the liberty of reviewing your combat footage from the Vital Festival Tournament. There's some additional enhancements I'd like oh, to suggest. Oh, upgrades. Now, for now. Uh, these should serve you well enough. The mine was a labyrinth back in the day. There's all sorts of tunnels and chambers the guys can move between. So if we're going to kill this thing, we'll have to split up and corner it. Uh, I like how he still has the piece of stash. General Ironwood says you've seen your fair share of combat. I trust that man with my life. So tomorrow, I'll be trusting you all too. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Ruby. Can we talk about what you did? <laughs> Let's make it happen, people. Okay, yeah. I saw them all <laughs> focusing in on the things that they were going to change. So it was very short term. Okay, it's literally just a makeover. No, no time skip. It looks like they're taking this time to flex how fluid the animation is now because it has become very fluid this is my favorite part <laughs> yeah john was like hmm maybe i should get a haircut and so he got his hair cut blake was thinking the same Oh, is that hard light dust? <laughs> Perhaps you kids won't get yourselves killed after all. <laughs> she meant that as a compliment. She reminds me of that one buff Overwatch lady. LZ's clear. I don't play it enough to remember her name. You've all got fancy new scrolls, so don't forget to use them. Keep your eyes and ears open. I want an update if you encounter the target. Alpha out. Huh? Uh, sorry. Just not used to the new hair yet. Yeah, I'm not either, Is to be it... honest. 
bad? No, no, it's good. Great, even. Man, I did not sign up to be a babysitter. Yeah, well, the rest of us babysit you all the time. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, but they're, they're gonna surprise you. They, they have a lot of combat strength. Hmm. Oh, now we're going into a deep, dark cave. Either it's gonna put up more of a fight than they expect, or there's gonna be something else in there. Without heating or a projected aura, the cold of Solitas can kill you in a matter of hours. I suddenly don't feel as bad about leaving Oscar behind. Can we talk about that again? Ooh. What about it? We're really not gonna tell Ironwood what happened to Oz? What we learned about Jin? About Salem? We are. We will. But you saw how things looked when we flew into Atlas. The General's heart seems to be in the right place, but that doesn't mean we should trust him yet. We need to play along for a while before we make any major decisions. Okay. How did Oscar feel about that? Uh, probably shouldn't keep running around with an ancient relic on a keychain, you know? <laughs> yeah, probably. But... I know you'll keep it safe in Atlas. Ruby, hiding things from Ironwood. Doesn't that feel like what Ozpin did to hey, us? Hey, that's what I was saying. <laughs> but I, I get I that say, she's only intending really to hold it back for now. She wants but him to earn the before, trust. Weren't you? I get it. I a get it. Time ago. I just found working alone tends to be for the best. Crow looking well, sharp. That's a shame. <laughs> here. <laughs> Give me an update. The connecting ice tunnels seem clear. I really like we his current style. Actual mine any minute now. This is so exciting! It feels like we're an actual huntsman team. You're seeing them in motion. Um, I do like everyone's like glow. What you did with your outfit, Ren. We should probably stay focused on the mission. <sighs> Noticed oh. me. Okay. I like your outfit too. Hm. Bravo, checking in. <laughs> Hit a bit of a snag. Is when a cave in in the main entrance. Not sure if it's recent or was caused by the original Still accident. put off by Weiss's hair. We'll That's the only complaint. Problem solving. Understood. Let us know if you need anything. You okay? I just realized where we are. This mine was oh, closed after yeah. an explosion. I remember this disaster. Or rather, I remember how furious it made my father. I wish I could take back the years of pain my family has caused. Is this the honest. same mind that exploded yeah, in Ilya's in story? This society is set up for Faunus to be at the bottom, and humans are willing participants. They benefit from doing nothing to help us. But there are still those who actively abuse us. Anyway, I didn't come over here looking to solve systemic societal issues. Harriet found a gap in the rubble <laughs> we think one of you could fit through. Ideally, someone with a knack for seeing in the dark? Aha! Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, it's still one of the coolest scenes in Volume 2 where Blake shot the electricity to turn the lights All out right, so Blake. she and Sun could Take bolt out around. the window. That was so cool. Is there any dust in the immediate area? Mine cards, uh, He sees us! He can't see no in the dark. Though. Great, then it should be safe to blast our way through. Okay. Heading back? <laughs> Okay, that jump scared me. Blake, stand back. That jump scared me. I I'll give you credit, Rooster T. Don't let it get away. Huh? Okay, these are the things that were in the intro. Reminds me of my favorite insect card, the Doomdozer. <laughs> No, I've always considered That's centipedes and millipedes to be gross. I'm generally okay with bugs, but not when they have that many legs. <laughs> oh, nice. I love... How much of a badass Ruby is on her day. Oh! Okay then, soccer, Mr. Boomerang. Skin. Okay. 
Okay. This is Robo. We found the target, but a flood This is some supply. semblance shenanigans, I'm sure. And hopefully we'll get a full explanation of the semblance shenanigans. Contact. Why does this seem like it'd be a fun section of a hack and slash game? Nice, I like seeing the upgrades that they've made to their weapons. A very head first approach. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just kind of our style. <sighs> I'm not seeing what's different about the hammer. Just gonna put that out there. I got it. No, I got it. Your semblance makes you super fast, just like me. Very cool. Though, based on your reaction time, I'd say I'm a little faster. This is Alpha. We've oh, the do I say it's rivalry? <laughs> You're not as good at this as Ruby. I remember that perfect headshot that she made at the start of Volume 4. <laughs> Unless this guy just somehow has quicker reflexes. Wait, stop! It's bad luck! I, I totally forgot that he had this bad luck. Darn it. Target escaped. Last scene headed east. Thanks for the call out. That could have been bad. I wouldn't thank me. My semblance brings misfortune. Sometimes I can't keep it under control. That so? Well, hey, don't beat yourself up about it. My semblance is good fortune. Lucky you, huh? Really? Charlie, bravo. You should be able to cut off the target at the heart of the mine. Crow and I won't be far behind. Really? I know this is probably going to give Crow an inferiority complex because essentially this guy is carrying him by countering his bad luck, but... I'll just say that I can this see a lot of people shipping them because of the um, matching of their and semblances. I'm just going to say that. that with you? <laughs> I thought the target was supposed to be in here. <gasps> no, it's on its way. Hi there. <laughs> or probably hello there. Okay, this is where they show what they can do. Yeah, I see. The, the one bit of exposed um, grim. I am speed. <laughs> Pretty awesome. You can see all of the training that's been drilled into them. They're a well-oiled unit. Crap. <laughs> what would you guys oh, do without me? What fortune? <laughs> That is interesting that this guy just happens to have good fortune as his semblance. That's the last thing I was expecting. Well, I mean, if you've got a semblance like good fortune, it's no wonder you could get into a team like this. The deck was in your favor from the start. If you decide you want to be something, then a good look semblance is likely going to get you that thing. Harriet? 
Is Ruby gonna get it first? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I thought you said your semblance was like mine. It is. I've seen other speed semblances before. That that was different. I think there's more going on than you think. Wait until she sees what she could do with her eyes. <laughs> Um, I was more thinking Rocky of catch, um, huh? the fact she can literally turn no, into rose petals and split herself up. Atlas control. That's definitely closed. different than simple Mission super speed. Yeah, thanks for the <laughs> Go home and sober up. Oh, are you the guy that Tyrion gutted? Are you the blood that we saw on the street in the previous chapter? I'm going to have to ask you to stop jump-scaring me. Oh, well, I'm someone just like you. <clears throat> someone who wants to mix things up around here. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm, g I'm guessing you were the guy. And nice, we've bookended a chapter... Uh, the same way twice <laughs> with Tyrion <laughs> and Watts. Y you know, uh, Watts first, then Tyrion. <laughs> okay. Lovely. Lovely stuff. Um, very surprised that there wasn't at least a few weeks time jump. Uh, from them for them settling in earning trust uh, getting integrated with the ranks that kind of thing No, it's a straight overnight transformation. I wasn't expecting that especially because of what's happened to Weiss's hair I don't understand it. I literally don't if anyone at rooster teeth or to do with Ruby has actually explained it then please let me know please let me know where where it was explained how her hair was able to do this like, because it's, like, doubled, even tripled in size. And I don't think hair does that. <laughs> uh, but a lot of the changes made sense. Um, like, decisions that you think might have been made a long time ago. Like, um, obviously, shorter hair is better for combat. I don't know why any of them have long hair, to be honest. Like, it's going to get caught in things. It's easy to get pulled by it. I know Yang like takes pride in her hair and doesn't want it being touched she's like an exception like she doesn't even want to get a haircut at all I, I, okay i respect that yang but uh blake you've been a ninja cat girl for how long like your whole life um and you never once thought that your hair could be an obstacle you never even thought to tie it up that's weird now that i think about it <laughs> Yeah, you had a bow, but it wasn't exactly doing anything for your hair. It was just to cover up your cat ears. <laughs> you know, Weiss, she's made a bigger obstacle for herself. That's got like twice the area to get stuck in things and get grabbed now. Uh, but now I liked how everybody was fiddling with the things that were going to get changed. Um, sort of to foreshadow it before it happened. But I guess... Um, since I, I, from what I heard, they leaked the uh, design changes. Um, what I say leaked, I mean officially. They officially previewed the design changes at RTX or something, and everyone already knew what they were going to look like. That's why they put them in the intro. And uh, yeah, I, I get that. But <laughs> I find it funny how they still threw in that little bit of known foreshadowing just, just to show that they were thinking about it before it happened. It's a neat little touch. I'll give them that. Biggest curiosity from this episode. I'll sometimes call it that because I'm that's what I'm used to saying. The most curious thing for me this time was that this guy has... A good fortune semblance as opposed to misfortune which yeah it makes them the perfect team uh, but I can see uh, Crow getting a little bit insecure about that um, he he didn't seem too pleased like oh great like it, you know that whole feeling of um, being I don't want to say being babysat that's not the right word but you know the kind of tone I'm trying to go for um, 
like, oh, with this guy around, I'm not a danger to anyone. It's still sort of a negative thought. It's not, oh, this guy can help nullify my powers. Great. It's more of, um, oh, I'm bringing this guy down because I'm negating his good fortune. Crow's a negative thinker, so he is going to be more uh, in the self-loathing kind of area with this. It's, it's, it's not exactly the most positive thing in the world for him. I see. I see. I see what's happening with Crow. Um, something I really, really respect, okay? Yeah, I mean, people shit on the writing of Ruby all the time. They do. Like, uh, it has its very vocal critics, especially on the writing front. But I have to give genuine props for the fact that everyone is discussing things. Not too many shows actually have their characters discuss things openly with each other and not just keep them silent until plot points. I like that Oscar approached Ruby and voiced concerns. I like that Ruby interested him with the relic and blah de blah de blah. I like that Yang brought up the conversation and wanted to talk about is this what we really want to do? Keep secrets from the general and then it was explained why they might want to do that and why Ruby might have a point. But Oscar also raised the point that this is kind of what Ospin used to do, which is what I was alluding to in my previous reaction. Like, could Ruby be sort of emulating Oz without even meaning to? Like, she's starting to see things his way. And that creates a very interesting dynamic for character conflict. And something I really respect is that the team actually took a moment out of their time to discuss it openly as a team. That is beautiful. I like that. Not a lot of shows have the respect for the plot to do that. Um, I, I don't know if people say this volume is an improvement over the volumes they claim to hate. I don't know if people say that it was more of the same for people that hate the direction after volume three no matter what. All I'm saying is that based on this chapter alone I've got to give a small round of applause to the writers on that that I have a tremendous amount of respect for when the heroes can um, just lay a difficult subject on the table and have a little bit of a discussion about it get some character input you know actually you know I'll be going on forever if I keep talking about that. You guys know what I mean. Um, really cool to see some more action going on. <laughs> Remember I said in the last chapter there wasn't all that much action? It's because they were saving it for this one, of course. <laughs> um, very cool uh, centipede or millipede uh, type Grim. I'm sure there's an official name for them. There's probably been sketches of them in the credits or something. I I'm not watching the credits. Um... You know, because it's just usually a bunch of sketches. This isn't one of those shows where there's an after credit scene unless it's the very end of the volume. Uh, yeah, I really liked how we got to see uh, the semblances in action. Uh, I liked seeing the upgrades to everyone's weapons. Like I said, I've not seen the upgrade on Nora's yet unless I missed it. But I do like how John Shield incorporates uh, hard light now. That's pretty cool, and it makes sense that because he's a physical fighter, that he'd have a physical upgrade, and not something more... Like, I know Ren's got these ninja wires coming out of his guns now, you know, that kind of thing. Like, he's not got anything fancy, he's just got extra reinforcement for the gear that he has. That's perfect. I'm really looking forward to John getting a big moment to show what he can do. Because um, that shield slam was great. I loved how he slid down the icy path and did the shield slam to knock the grim back. That was so cool. I think John is a cool guy. <laughs> um, Nora seems to be um, getting a little bit frustrated that things aren't moving quicker with Ren after they got really close even closer than they've ever been before at the end of volume four i know that it's never really the right time which is sort of the point he was making like oh that we've got a creature to find let's focus on the mission like you know she was sort of getting the feeling you could tell of it's never the right time 
when is the right time? <laughs> like, I just want to compliment you, damn it. I love you. <laughs> so, it's contrary to what I thought, they're not officially together yet. Um, because otherwise, he'd have uh, picked up exactly what she was going for. I thought when they got close to each other at the end of uh, Volume 4, that was sort of unofficial, uh, official sort of, oh, they're together now thing. And a lot of people thought that at the time, but obviously, it's not official yet. Um, yeah, I, I, I like how there's... There's a little bit of a rivalry established uh, with Ruby and this other girl. I'll learn their names eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> I like how there's a bit of a rivalry to do with the type of speed semblance that they have. Uh, one seems to supercharge herself, like the Energizer Buddy. <laughs> I, I'm assuming that's how it works. Um, but Ruby, yeah, I've always been curious as to how her semblance works exactly, because it seems like two semblances combined into one. She can turn into rose petals and control where they go somehow, biologically, somehow. Somehow, okay? <laughs> semblances do work a little bit like magic, I have, I have to admit. Um, she can split herself up into multiple paths that all move independently, by the way and then reform and zip around in the sky as we saw in volume four i i just don't know how that also relates to having a super speed quirk unless it's the speed at which she can move her petals which is really fast it's so weird because um she's she uses her super speed sometimes while tangible like when she was carrying penny in volume two before the weight of her robotic body made her ruby tire out and drop her she she was whole while carrying her so i really would like if this aesops girl could explain how ruby semblance works after studying it like just so the audience knows and maybe it would lead to ruby finding a way to improve her own semblance you know, there's a lot of interesting avenues that are being opened up here and I'm going to end this with saying a big RIP to uh, my protester guy. I, uh, of all the things you want to meet in a dark alley, Tyrion is not one of them. And oh, I am surprised to admit that this show has jump scared me twice in one chapter and I am not happy about that. I, I, I beseech you to stop, Rooster Teeth. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, that's about it from me. Um, I'm really hoping we get some of the villain's perspective um, next chapter, but we'll have to see. I'll see you guys next time.